Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I will show you how I put my signatures together in terms of choosing and assembling pages. So this is the journal I will be working in today. It's just an empty cover and now I'm going to make a signature for it. So you can see here, I have written down the five main categories of papers that we can put into our journals, but this is not an exhaustive list. This is a guide. So let's start with category number one, which is plain paper. It can be tea dyed, it can be coffee dyed, avocado dyed, onion skin dyed. I have tutorials on all of those. I will link them down below and I'll show you what I have here. I'm not sure how well this is showing up in video, but I like to choose different hues. So I have some onion skin dyed here. I have some with some pattern over here on this page tea dyed, some little bit of pattern over here. This one's avocado dyed. You can see the difference. And I think the more difference in hues, the more rich the journal looks. And then there's, of course, you can also use just plain white paper as well. But like I said, I think having a range of different colors throughout the journal adds to the character of the journal. Okay, the next category is lined paper. It can be dyed or not. I have chosen a selection of different types and different colors. Once again, you can see these ones are not dyed. This one is a ledger page. And then I have got some large sheets of tea dyed papers that are all different. And these large sheets are also great for, you know, large journals. So basically all I do is you get one of these large booklets and then you remove the pages and you tea dye them. So then you have those large pages so you don't have to do any hinging if you're making a large journal. And then again, you can use little notebooks like this and get the pages out, full sheets. Find the middle here. I open these up and then I remove pages and they stay intact. And that way I have full large sheets that I can actually use in my journal. And once again, I have a selection of different ones ready to go. Next category we have our book pages. So we have normal books, which is, I mean, this one does have some illustrations, but it's just a book with writing on it. That's what I mean by normal books. Then there are quote books like these. You can see just quotes. And I think these look beautiful in journals as well. They add an extra little bit of treasure. Then we have poem books like this. For example, this is the only poem book that I have and I love it so much because there's so much writing space. And when I'm determining how many book pages I'm gonna put in a journal, I do look at the amount of writing space available. So I usually use the least amount of these book pages, but it also depends on the writing space. Then we have illustrated books like Edith Holden, for example, or something like this, where there's lots of illustrations in a book. And then, of course, there's dictionaries and thesaurus and all that sort of stuff. So these pages you can't really use for writing unless you add some clear pages onto them or whatnot. Or you use them for some collaging or pockets and things like that. And I usually would only put maybe just if I'm if I'm doing one signature, perhaps I would just do one of these. I wouldn't sort of have too many of these because there's not much you can do with them. The next category is what I refer to as specialty papers, and that includes things like vellum, for example. I love to include vellum in my journals. This one here, these two have been coffee dyed, so you can definitely coffee dye vellum as well, especially if it's like bright and happy colors that you don't particularly want in your journal. And also this type of thing, this is all vellum. The next one is, of course, scrapbook paper. I do use a lot of scrapbook paper in my journals or any type of patterned paper. Like, for example, this. This is gift wrap paper. So it's beautiful. It's got this beautiful pattern on it. I will use something like this in a journal. Then we have things like this. The handmade looking paper or mulberry paper. To see this beautiful kind of texture. Look at this. I love this. This isn't handmade, but it looks handmade. So this all, I would place it into this specialty pages category. And then we have things like this coloring sheets. There's a whole lot of these floating around after the fad of coloring in. And I've actually tea dyed this one. And then it's plain on the other side, which I love because we can utilize that writing space. I'm all about writing space. Things like maps always look beautiful in a journal, especially if they're vintage maps like this one here. 
music paper everyone loves this i mean i love this i don't know if everyone does but i do see a lot of this used in junk journals and then i also put this one in this specialty paper category it's just images from a reader's digest book that i have glued and sewn onto a tea dyed page and created this little insert for my journal right there's writing space it's all about the writing space and then the last category is extras and i would use the least amount of these in a journal so for example an envelope you can bind in an envelope here into a journal and becomes like a pocket type thing depending on what kind of envelope you use something like this for example perhaps i would bind it in this way and then you would have a pocket here cut that open you have a pocket here as well and then paper bags usually they would be folded in half you place it into journal this basically all creates pockets you can have something like this you know bound into a journal you can make a pocket out of this to stick onto a page but we're talking about pages that we are binding in so we're making a signature something like this you know folded in half i do use quite a lot of these in my journal and then of course doilies so this one probably might be a little bit too small if you're making a small journal you know this one's tea dyed you can use this in as a you know a starting page or whatever there's all different types of paper doilies that you can use as you know i like to use these large ones for a larger journal then there's something like this i've used these before I fold them in half this way so basically these add, uh, you know, if you're using it for a pocket, it's functional. Or if you're using these doilies and things like that, it's not so functional. You can't really write a whole lot on the doilies. It's more for the aesthetics of the journal, right? But going back to my project at hand, the first thing that I do when I have my cover ready is I decide how many signatures am I going to have in this journal. I have decided I only want one signature in this journal. And that's when I also decide how many pages I want in my journal. This is a guide here. Okay, so for one signature book, I usually have 15 to 20 pages. If I'm making a two signature book, I will have 10 to 15 pages per signature. And if I'm making a three signature book, etc., four signature or five signature, I will only have about 10 pages per signature. That's just the way that I like to make my journals. And this is just a guide. Sometimes I might make a one signature book that has only 10 pages, for example. But generally speaking, this is the kind of thing that I go with. So back to my project at hand, I have decided I want one signature in this journal and I'm going to put in 20 pages. The very first thing that I do before I even go to choose pages is make a template. I've spoken about this before. So basically I just use a bit of cardstock and I cut it to the exact size, the biggest size of paper, let's say, that can fit into my journal. See? So I can have papers that are exactly this size or smaller, not larger. I'm going to put it aside for now because I will need this later and you'll see why. So now it's time to choose my pages. I don't usually put them in categories like this, like I, I, I did this for the video. Usually I will just pluck out some pages and then place them into the categories. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose some paper from each category. And like I said before, I usually use most from plain paper and lined paper, specialty paper, and the least of book pages and extras. So I might start with tea and coffee dyed paper, and let's say I'm going to choose five sheets from here. All right, I've chosen my sheets from there, so now I'm going to go to my lined paper, and I might choose, I don't know, let's say three or four sheets from here. I've only chosen three so far, but I can always add more if I want to. Now I'm going to go to my specialty papers and I might choose, I don't know, let's say six from here. So I've chosen a vellum page. I've chosen this one here that I've shown before, a coloring page, a handmade type paper or mulberry, I think it is, and two scrapbook pages. So I've chosen six from that category. So far I have 14 pages altogether. So I need to choose another six pages from my last two categories, book pages and extras. All right, so I'm going to go with book pages. So I've chosen three from that category. I have my Edith Holden page. I have a poem book page and a quote book page. So that's three. And I just need one more to make it a 20 page journal. And I have decided to go with this paper bag. So now I have some pages from each category. The focus for me is on writing. I, I want to have a lot of writing space in there. 
and I have a lot of large pages that are bigger than my required size, which is this size here, my template. So I'm going to utilize those large pages to make pockets. And these are some of the things that I think about in advance. I want to have some pockets that fold up. I want to have some pockets that fold in. I'll show you an example. You can see here, I've used these large pages and instead of trimming it off, I fold it in using my template and I create pockets like this. I also create this where it's not sewn shut to make it a pocket, but it can open for extra writing space. And then you can have something in here, for example, that you can clip in. And then also, of course, my middle signature here, I've used the scrapbook page that I have folded up to make it into a pocket. So those are the sort of things I think about in advance before I start kind of cutting into things and trimming and everything to size. So straight away, I already know that I want to use this large scrapbook page and I want to make a pocket out of it. It's going to look something like this. So this is going to be the very middle of my signature and I'm going to put it aside just for now. All right, so now before I start assembling everything into a signature, I'm going to use my template and basically see which pages are taller than my template. So I'm going to start folding everything and this process will be speeded up. But you can see this is a page in my signature and if it's perfectly within my template, nothing has to be trimmed off the top or the bottom. And I'm just going to keep going. And here we go. So these are some of the pages that I have folded down and these are all smaller than my template and I'm only looking at the height at the moment. I'm not worried about this because like I said before, I might want to fold them into pockets that kind of fold in and out. Okay. So these are all good. I only have these pages, which are quite large that I need to trim down to size. So all I'm going to do, assemble everything. So all of my large pages are assembled together and then I use my template. And now I know that this is how much I need to cut off. And here we go. Usually I will do this one by one just to be really precise. But for the sake of this video, I'm doing them all at once. All of those pages are ready height wise. And now I'm going to come to this scrapbook paper. And again, I'm using my template to see how tall this page has to be. I'm just leaving a tiny little bit of extra space here because the fold adds a little bit of length, if that makes sense. So just using my template to fold this down. Here we go. This is the perfect height. I just need to get rid of this white bit or shorten the pocket even more depending, you know, depends what I want to do. I'm just going to get rid of this white bit. There we go. And I'm just going to fold it in half like I did with all the other pages. So, so far I have 20 pages that are cut to size height wise and they should all fit beautifully inside my journal like this. They're not placed into, I'm just double checking. They're not placed into a signature yet. Here we go. Perfect. So now what we have to work with is these extra long bits. The first thing I'm going to do is place everything into a signature. So I'm just going to start assembling the pages and making the signature. So you can see here my categories. I have plain paper, lined paper, book pages, specialty pages, and extras, just this one here. I don't usually, you know, put everything in categories like this just for demonstration purposes. And now I'm going to start with what do I want my first page to be? I know already I want my first page to be this vellum page. And I already know I want my second page to be this Edith Holden page. So I'm going to start building my signature, right? So the next page, for example, I wouldn't choose this page because it's got writing on it. This one also has writing on it. I wouldn't put them together. So the next thing I'm going to choose is perhaps a lined page or a just plain paper. Maybe I'll just go with this one. Then I might have some more fun, you know, pages like this and just keep building that way. I might want to put my pocket page in here, then poem, maybe this one next. So I've kind of put everything how I wanted it, mixed them all up and I have one page left. So I'm going to find a space for this one. All right. So I'll show you the order of all everything that I've chosen. Vallum page, illustrated page, and then some plain. And then this one, this one, these ones are going to be pockets. 
you know so i'm thinking because this one is going to be a pocket there's going to be things in here so it's not going to be looking plain like this when the journal is ready i have things in this pocket here you know maybe some embellishments things like that right so you can see the basic idea from uh, this is from my personal preference is that there are a lot of writing pages and the other pages that I add in are just adding to the character of the journal if that makes sense so it's not all plain paper and that's my middle signature I have 20 pages in here that are folded in half so this journal will have 80 pages and just to make it make sense I have 20 sheets like this in my journal once it's folded in half you get four sides one so you times how many pages you have by four. 20 sheets of paper will give you 80 sides when they're folded in half. If you don't want to bother with making those pockets, you can just go ahead, use your template and trim everything off. But I have already decided that I want those pockets, like I've spoken before, or pages that, you know, open up. I want to save this space rather than cut it off. And now I can use my template, right? So all of this needs to be not visible. So I'm either going to trim it off or I'm going to fold it in. So I'm just going to make myself a little mark here somewhere. So first I'm going to make those folds on the pages I don't want to trim. And, you know, just to be sure, I might even fold them in just a little bit extra in just to be on the safe side. There we go. This is going to be coming off. I'm not going to be utilizing that in this journal. Push everything very, very tight against the spine. And now I can use my template and I can go ahead and just trim all the excess off. I really hope I'm not overcomplicating things here. This is just one way of doing this. this you know, I just kind of do it without thinking and sometimes trying to explain something that's really quite simple, you know can make it seem a whole lot more com complicated than it actually is. But here we go. This is what my signature is looking like at the moment. Everything is trimmed down to size and looking okay. And now I'm just going to double check that it fits beautifully in my journal, just to see if I need to trim any more off. And everything fits perfectly inside. You can see there's a tiny little bit of space left. And that's just the way I like it because sometimes I like to go in and add tabs like this and maybe I don't want them to be sticking out too much and be visible. Maybe I only want them to be visible once the journal is opened. There's nothing wrong also with having pages sticking out and showing. That's all, you know, up to your own creativity. So now that I have everything in my signature, everything is assembled just the way that I want it. My next step before binding this into my journal is sewing, inking, you know, the edges of the pages and all of that. I do have a video on how, you know, all of those steps. I'm going to link that video up there somewhere and in the description down below. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and do some of that work, uh, the inking and the sewing and, and all of that stuff. And then I might come back and show you what I've done. But in terms of choosing the pages and assembling pages, I hope that this video was helpful. That was the whole point of the video. In any case, I hope you feel inspired. All right, I'm going to go and do some sewing now. Okay, let me show you what I've done so far. I have bound that signature in using a three-hole pamphlet stitch. I've rounded some edges, inked all the edges. I've done sewing, made a pocket here. I've added some decorative type sewing some more rounded edges, all of the paper, not all of the pages, most of the pages have had their edges inked. Again, some more sewing, different type of sewing. There's that pocket here. Well, it's not a pocket. I actually sewed all around, but this page can be opened up and this allows me to clip stuff in there. And middle signature here, you can see the binding over here. And I have stitched the pocket shut. Here again, this one opens up, that sewing again. And I think you get the point. I've opened up this paper bag here. That beautiful wiggly sewing on a page. This one is sewn shut, this pocket. Rounded edges, inked edges. So now what I'm going to do is fill up all of the pockets, embellish, and that's going to really make this journal come alive. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, here we go. The journal is completely done. Let me show you inside. 
All right, so on the first page, I have this journal belongs to. That's on that vellum page. And then over here in the first pocket, I have a paper clip with a dangly. And then inside, I've popped in an Edith Holden envelope that I have pre made and a magazine image that I've backed onto some cardstock to make it into a journaling spot. Okay. I haven't done anything here. I don't want to overdo everything and put so much stuff everywhere. Here is that paper bag. I've popped some ephemera in there, embellished the pocket a little bit. Over here, I've actually just put a napkin, a beautiful napkin, paper clip with a little bead. And then this can be used in collaging and all that sort of fun stuff. So if you watched my videos before, you know that I like to clip things in so they can be moved around. I've just done a little collaged envelope, I mean pocket over here. So I like to clip things in that can be moved and moved around and taken out. Here is just a little notepad with some bits of paper for extra journaling and once again like I said you know this can be moved around and placed wherever the person that's doing the journaling wants to have it. Here is a little book page bow uh, paper clip so that's on a paper clip I have a tutorial all the tutorials I mentioned will be linked down below that beautifies that page and then I have just clipped things in a little envelope I just love envelopes as you can see and then here a quote from a book and that's on that page here is that page that opens up and I've popped some more inspiring quotes in there on this page is a tag and then here is a little envelope that opens up that's secured onto the tag to make it into a pocket I have a tutorial on these envelopes that open up and now we come to that middle signature and that looks really really rich this one here I also have a tutorial on these they are hand fan things I don't know what you would call them these things from hand fans then I make I make them into kind of like book plates I guess so they can be moved around wherever you know but for right now, I just put it into this middle signature. And then here, I've just popped pieces of ephemera. This is a plant that I laminated. I have a tutorial on these. It's not a plant. It's a, what would you call it? A leaf. Anyway, that's also like a bookmark. What do I call this? A book plate? A, a bookmark, I meant. Here, I've just embellished the pockets with some doilies. And I popped in some more little th things that can be used and moved around and written on. Here is an envelope that I made from, I think it was some type of a magazine. And then, you know, just adding more journaling space. And I mean, this could have gone anyway, right? There's just so many possibilities, endless possibilities. Another one of those paper clips with a charm. And then this one was also done in my one of my videos using security envelopes and making things out of those and then i have a tag in there and that's what makes it fun we have a little bit of this a little bit of that you know this one here paper clip this was in my washi tape video that's also a tutorial and then here i've just popped some more you know this is a book page pocket so once again they, they can be used in any way you know whoever purchases this journal once i have it on sale sees fit what I've done in the past when I purchase a journal, I, you know, might take all of the ephemera out and then do with it whatever I please as I'm journaling. Here we have a tag. That's a pocket that also opens up more journaling space. For me, it's all about the writing, right? That, that's what for me journals are. But everyone's different. So, you know, you do you. Here is that paper bag and I've just embellished it with some paper ruffles. And just put some things in there this is a magazine image that i backed onto some cardstock you know to make it into a journaling spot this is actually a printable that i took out of one of my journals that i purchased from somebody else and this is a playing card that was sent to me in some happy mail so i have these things in here in this pocket and I didn't want to overdo it and put stuff everywhere on every single page. And then here is that pocket. And then I just put in 
this postcard this was also sent to me in some happy mail and one of the envelopes that i didn't use and there we go there we have it that is the journal if you would like to see a more in-depth version of embellishing and binding and all of that please check out that video i mentioned another thing as well if you have any questions about sewing inking glues whatever most likely other people have asked those questions before and most likely i have answered those questions in my frequently asked questions video i'm going to pop these on screen now if you wanted to take a screenshot are you guys feeling inspired did you learn something new are you having some new ideas floating around in your head please let me know and of course you can ask me questions if you have questions but also please check out that frequently asked questions video i answer so many questions and you will find it particularly beneficial if you are somewhat new at this craft thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye